I would like to welcome you to another session of uh, teaching. My name is Pastor Alfred Toffibam. It's my pleasure to bring to you the Word of God. And we are going to be focusing again today on the flesh. Now, the, the point I'm trying to get to you is this. Yes, you have three enemies that prevent you from living a holy life. And these three enemies are your flesh, the world, and Satan, or the devil. And I want you to understand that the greatest of these enemies is your flesh. The reality of what goes on in this world today is that we have the spiritual realm and the physical realm. And most people, they exist in the physical realm, that which this body desires, but not on the spiritual realm where the spirit leads them to live the life that God wants them to live. People struggle. You may be struggling with this physical aspect, with this, with this, with this, or with this sin and with that sin. The reality is that that struggle is coming from within your body, from within your heart, from within your mind. Just like Jesus said in Mark 7 verse 20 to 23, that that which comes out of a man out of a person is what makes them defiled, sinful. And I make the argument that every action that you take is something that you have thought about. And we saw that in James 1, 13 to 16, that God tames nobody. God doesn't pull you to sin. He doesn't lead you into sin. But that you are tempted when by your own sinful desires of this body, you are dragged away and enticed. And when you are enticed, you sin. And sin brings for what? Death. Separation from God. So the real fight is this flesh, this body, and what this body desires. You cannot be victorious in the Christian life until you bring this flesh under control. Now some people may go to the convent or they may go to the monastery and things like that. But the reality is that if you cannot overcome the flesh by the spirit, no matter where you are, you will still be dragged away by the desires of this world. We're going to be looking today from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to 24, which gives us the characteristic of people who do not live for the kingdom of God, but who live for the kingdom of the flesh, who live for the desires of the flesh. What surprises me a lot too is that Jesus pointed out that by the time that he's going to be coming back to this world, many people, many people are going to miss the kingdom of God because of the desires of the flesh. Yes. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 and 38, he says this, As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Yes, the trumpet will sound and Jesus will be revealed and many people will not be able to go with him into the kingdom of righteousness because they are dragged behind by the desires of this flesh. For in those days before the flood, people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage up until the day that Noah entered the ark. Listen carefully. Shouldn't I eat? You may ask. Shouldn't I drink? You may ask. Shouldn't I marry? You may ask. Yes, you can do all those things. But if those things consume your life, if all you think is, what am I going to eat? What am I going to wear? What am I going to drink? Or who am I going to sleep with? Or could I, who will I marry? Or who will I marry? And even when you're married, if these things absorb you, you are not fit 
the journey of the kingdom of God. This is Jesus speaking. Now let's turn to Matthew uh, 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 chapter 6, beginning from verse 25, which will link us to Matthew chapter, um, to, to, to Ephesians 4, 17, where we're going to read. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, it says, Therefore I tell you, and he says that therefore with things that come before that, you know what comes before that, before he says that? He talks about the things of this world, where he says in verse 19, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Don't waste your life not investing spiritually, but investing only on things of this earth. That's where your mind will be. But you say, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, things that are spiritual. Invest yourself in spiritual things, not just physical things. What to eat, what to drink, who to marry, and what house to stay in, and how much money to have in your bank account. And like pastor that that's a little harsh what yes no if you want heaven if you want the kingdom of heaven i have to bring this message to you as it is he said lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven not on earth because wherever your treasure is there your heart will be if you invested in heaven you will dream about heaven you think about heaven you will work for heaven but if you're investing in the things of this world the things of the flesh that's where your mind is going to be and you will miss out the kingdom of god so he goes down here to say no one can serve two masters no one can serve two masters either he, he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to the to the one and despise the other he says no one or oh, you cannot serve god and money you have to make a choice you have to make a choice you have to make a sacrifice and then and then he goes in to say therefore i tell you do not worry about your life what you will eat or drink or about your body what you will wear is not the life more important than food and the body more important than clothes? Invest in heaven. Worry about heaven, not worry about the things of this earth. Until you reach the point like Job and say that I brought nothing into this world and I'm going to take nothing out of this world until you reach that point you have not really made the sacrifice to live the holy life that God expects of you to live Jesus is not saying that you you have to go naked or that you have to go hungry or and so on but the point that is made here is this you must set your priorities straight and spiritual priorities have to come first before any other thing that pertains to the flesh he concludes here by saying seek ye, devil seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness that this is the point i make seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and then the other things will be yours food will be yours clothes will be yours woman will be a uh, uh, wife will be your husband will be yours everything it will be yours but you have to seek first the kingdom of god because all these other things pertain to what the flesh so we're talking about this flesh that you have to overcome here in matthew 6 he, he gives a warning here he said for let me see where is the verse for the gentiles okay verse 32 matthew 6 for the gentiles run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them yes god knows you need food he knows everything that you need and he said i will provide your need according to his riches philippians 4 verse 19 you see this is how the gentiles live this is life in the western world we who live in the western world the fight is even harder because this pursuit of money is strong and everybody who steps into this western world they want money they want to accumulate wealth 
and it becomes very difficult to actually live for Christ within this Western world. Yes, it's very difficult. Not impossible, but very, very difficult. And so that's why Paul is warning here, Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 24 here. He said, So I say this, and I affirm in the Lord that you are no longer to walk just as the Gentiles walk. Don't walk like we do here in the West. You'll be gone. Pursuit of money everywhere. Remember, Jesus said there in Matthew 6, you cannot serve both God and money. People, we travel to the West to serve money, to worship money. And everybody else wants to travel to the West to worship, to, to have money and to worship money. That's why the book of Revelation says that the whole world has gone after the beast, the Babylonian Western system. Because why? We want material possessions. We want money. That's it. You can't have both. Jesus said, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world? but forfeits his own soul. That will it profit you. You know, somebody sang in the past, I would rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I would rather have Jesus than silver or gold. Yeah. The decision, the choice is yours. Jesus said that a man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. Don't worry so much about the state of your physical needs. Worry about the state of your spiritual needs. Yes, this flesh is our greatest enemy. It's not the devil out there. It's not the world out there. It is this flesh. Which is why Paul says in, in, in 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27 that I fight so hard, not like somebody boxing in the air. I fight so hard to bring my body under control. I beat my body to be under control. So that the desires of the flesh will not take me over. When we look at Galatians, Five. Beginning from verse 16, he says, Paul said, So I say, walk in the spirit, that you may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And then he, he shows us what are the desires of the flesh. And you can go back and read that part of scripture, and you know, so you can understand. And then he goes down and gives us the fruit of the spirit. The spirit in you fights with the flesh because this body wants the things of this world, not spiritual things. And only when the Holy Spirit is in you, which means you must be born again first, you must have repented and believed in Jesus so that he transformed you with the spirit. Until that happens, you cannot fight this flesh. It's impossible. It's impossible. I remember, again, I think I shared it last time. How, as a young person, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, I felt like, no, it's impossible to live the Christian life. Well, that was because I did not know the work of the power of the Spirit in the life of a believer. Until I came to that realization. And with the Spirit, I fight the flesh and put it in its place. You can overcome. You can overcome the flesh. Yes, you can. You can overcome the flesh. So here you see, see so the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And then he goes down to verse 24 and says that those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. I believe the Bible. I've lived it in me. Yes, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, He will help you to overcome the desires of the flesh. It says, I am crucified. I am crucified. The flesh is crucified. 
The flesh has died to sin. We know that dead people don't move. If you're in Christ, your flesh is crucified. You are dead to sin. And you should no longer live in sin. And so since you walk in the Spirit, it says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So back to what Pastor Jesus said, so I say this and I firm in the Lord that you are no longer to walk just as the Gentiles, the other Gentiles do. In the futility of their minds. That's the key thing there. People, you are what you think. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. If you spend your time thinking about sin, you will continue to sin. If you spend your time thinking about the things of the flesh, you will always act towards the things of the flesh. But if you spend your time thinking about spiritual things, you will act spiritually. You will overcome the flesh. See, in the futility of their minds, being darkened in their understanding. You know, you think useless, then you cannot understand. And then you're excluded from God, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their hearts. You think useless, then your understanding is darkened. And then you are excluded from God because you are ignorant and you are ignorant of God now because your heart is hardened. I pray for you not to have a hardened heart. That this word will have a place in your heart. And this is for your benefit. <laughs> Remember, I said this is for your benefit. When God gave the law to the, to the Israelites in the past, He said, these laws are for your good. Come to Jesus and live for Jesus. Unless all you desire is physical things. But he says that seek first the kingdom and its righteousness. And then those things will come. You are not being denied those things. But just say seek first the kingdom of God. So you continue to say that. And they having become callous. Have given themselves over to indecent behavior. For the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. This is a, the characteristic of our Western culture. We have lost all sense of decency. We have lost all sense of purity. We are impure. We are indecent. And we are greedy. Greedy as the grave. And anywhere you are, you could be as greedy as well. It is whether or not you have set your priorities straight. And so he says here that, verse 20, but you did not learn Christ in this way, right? Have you ever heard about Jesus and what he expects from you? Repentance from sin and transformation by the Holy Spirit. And then you begin to live the life of God, the holy life, where God says that without holiness, no one will see God. No, you cannot live in, in, in fornication and adultery, in stealing and lying and think that you are going to enjoy life with God. No, you're going to go to hell. And hell is real. You will be separated from God. And you will suffer eternally because of the choices that you make now. So, but you did not learn Christ in this way. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as the truth in Christ Jesus is, you know, Paul puts it if here, you know, it's, it's your choice whether to believe or not to believe. And sometimes you may actually even be in a church, but you have not given over and surrendered your flesh to Jesus so that you can take control. That's why Paul is saying that if you have learned about Christ, and what, what ought you to have learned about Christ Jesus? So that in reference to your former way of life, you are to rid yourselves of the old self, to rid yourself of all sinful ways and behaviors, all of that. When you know Jesus Christ, you cannot say, I'm a believer and you're still living in sin. You cannot say, I'm following Jesus and you're still actively living in sin. No, that's not how the truth in Jesus is. The truth in Jesus is that those who believe in Jesus have to put away the old self 
and all its sinfulness. And in his place, because that old self is being corrupted in accordance with the lust and deceit. This flesh, I will remind you again, this flesh, your body, is your greatest enemy to live the life that God wants you to live. But you can overcome. You can overcome the flesh. Only one weapon, but there's two. The Word of God and the Spirit of God. So I pray for you that your eyes should be open. If you are like, Pastor, I, I really don't get what you are saying. How can that be? Yes, I understand because I lived there at some point where I thought it is impossible to live the life that God expects. But why was I thinking that way? Because I was in the flesh. It is only when you surrender yourself, your mind, your body, and every part of your body. We're going to see that in the book of Romans. It is only when you surrender those things to God that you can see the difference that the Holy Spirit can make in your life. I have to surrender. See, 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 and that you are to be renewed in the spirit of your mind is here. What do the worldly people do? What is our Western mindset? We are futile in our thinking. We're useless in our thinking. Why? Because we only think about what to eat, what to drink, uh, 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 how our house is, how much money we can make, and who to sleep with, and so on and so forth. That is, the Bible says, useless thinking. Useless thinking. But for you to have it right, you have to do what? You have to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. As you think, so are you. The most important thing that helps you is the word of God to transform your thinking. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. It says, do, do, do not conform any longer to this world, the way the world does things, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And what renews your mind is the word of God. The more you study the Bible, the more you absorb the ways of God. And with the Holy Spirit, you can overcome this flesh. Yes. And you will not only go into the kingdom of God, but you will have a big reward in the kingdom of God. Those who live holy lives will receive a big reward in the kingdom of God. And even in this life, God will reward you because he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. But our problem is that for most people, they seek these things first rather than the kingdom of God. He will supply your need both now and you receive a great reward in heaven. A mansion. This is for real. Don't be among those who are going to cry and weep and say, if only I knew, if only I knew. But you have to accept it by faith. Jesus said, I am going to prepare a place and he has prepared the place. And it is beautiful, full of beautiful houses and every beautiful thing that you have never even seen. But that cannot be yours unless you have surrendered to Jesus now and overcome this sinful nature and live a life that is holy for him. So it says that you should be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And I'm saying that you use the word of God and the spirit of God to effect this change in your mind. And then put on a new soul and be a new person, a different person. Not the sinful person that you used to be yesterday. When you say you are in Christ Jesus, there has to be a big change in your life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 If anyone is in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. You are totally something new. Behold, all the old is gone and all things have become new. Yes, for those who are in Christ Jesus. He said, this new self, which is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. So you, you, you are born again, you believe in Christ Jesus, you are transformed by the Holy Spirit, you use the word of God to continue to, trans, to transform you, you are now a new creature, you are a different person, you belong to the realm of God. And then it says, you should put your mind on things above, 
on heavenly things not on earthly things yes 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 you can overcome the flesh the flesh is a formidable strong enemy but you can overcome with the power of the word of god and the power of the spirit but it starts with surrendering your life to jesus he said, we're surrendering your life to Jesus by believing in Him as your Savior, as the one who will transform you. And yes, He will transform you, as I've said, both by the Word of God and by the Spirit of God. The flesh is a formidable enemy, but you can overcome. I pray that you totally surrender to Jesus, that His Spirit will transform you and prepare you for a holy life and for your great reward in the kingdom of God. Thank you for listening and goodbye.